So, in the sexual reproduction, there is a fusion of male and female gametes. So, the cells are duplicated, divided and produced the young ones, producing the young ones. Let us see, here we consider this is one organism X and Y. So, X contains the genetic material, the genetic material A and Y contains genetic material A. This is the genetic material, the DNA it is in the form of chromosomes and here also it is in the form of chromosomes. Here two organisms are involved in the production of new organism, male, female. These two organisms, they are giving rise to a new organism. So this new organism Z, just think that it is Z. It is getting the genetic material from female that is Y, it is getting that A genetic material and it is getting that A genetic material from X, A plus A, 2A. It means that the genetic material is doubled in this generation. But is it a fact? Is it happening like that? Do you have double the amount of chromosomes in you when compared to your parent? In such case, your children will have double than you. Their generations, next generation will have double than them. In this way, if it happens, at each and every stage of the sexual reproduction, the amount of chromosomes, genetic material is doubled, the total planet would be filled up with genetic material. There won't be any room for any other organism or any other thing to exist because if the genetic material is doubled like that, it is not happening. It is not happening. Then what is happening? Here in the sexual reproduction, the kind of cell division, the lineages are different, not like other cases. Generally in our body cell division takes place. Every day number of cells are formed in our body because every day we lose number of cells in our blood, in our muscles, in our skin. Our skin loses number of cells every day new cells are formed. But how the new cells are formed? Here is the skin cell. From the pre-existing cell a new cell is formed. You know the cell theory. New cells are always formed from the pre-existing ones. Here it contains the genetic material A. The new cell contains the genetic material A. Same amount of chromosome. Exactly. This is normal cell division means when a new cell is formed from the pre-existing one, whatever the amount of chromosome is there, whatever the number of chromosomes are there, for example, uh, here we have 36 chromosomes. In this also you will have 36 chromosomes. But in reproduction, in sexual reproduction, the reproductive cells or the germ cells are produced by different division. So that is the division in which the newly formed cell will get 50% of chromosomes from male, 50% of chromosomes from female. That means here the male is having A amount of chromosomes, it will get 1 by 2 A and from female it has A, here it will get 1 by 2 A. So it becomes A. That means the new organism is also having the same number of chromosomes to their parent. So this kind of cell division, special cell division is observed here. And one more thing already I discussed here, the genetic recombination takes place. When a new cell is formed, the DNA is copied. So while copying, if there are many errors, the DNA cannot accommodate in the cell apparatus and the cell will die. While copying the DNA, there are less errors, there is less chance for variations. But in sexual reproduction, you see, two individual organisms combined to produce a single organism. Here male X, he is having some variations. He is male, he is having some variations. Here female Y, she is having some variations. Two individuals with, with different variations, 
they are producing a cell zygote here they are producing the female produces female cell the male produces male cell which contain half amount of chromosomes half number of chromosomes then their original cell these two cells join together they form a zygote so this will be having very good variations which are very helpful helpful variations are accumulated here and this zygote is a new variant so in every generation we are new variants when compared to our parents we have acquired the variations accumulated in both the mother and father so out of those we get good variations which help us to survive exist but sometimes in some cases any disorders are there in the genetic material of your parent either mother or father there are some chances of acquiring such disorders also but there also there is a ratio there is a calculation whether you acquire it or not okay so that is a different case we study in genetics in this way the whatever the variations are there in the parent organisms these variations accumulated and the new dna is formed here in the zygote in sexual reproduction so there is more scope for these variations and moreover here in sexual reproduction the sex cells or the germ cells whatever are formed these sex cells or germ cells will have the half number of chromosomes so by that when two sex cells combine they form a zygote with the number of chromosomes that are there in that organism so in this way the sexual reproduction is carried so now let us see the difference between the germ cells and the somatic cells what are somatic cells the cells that are present in our body parts like the cells present in your skin the cells present in your uh, muscle the cells present in your body parts the cells present in your blood all these are somatic cells but in your body there are some special cells called as germ cells that help in the sexual reproduction that participate in the sexual reproduction somatic cells are found in everywhere in our body but exclusively in reproductive parts some special cells are produced called as germ cells what is the difference between germ cell and somatic cell somatic cells will have 2n number of chromosomes means two sets of chromosomes will be there in somatic cell 1n number of chromosomes so that is the main difference between these germ cells and somatic cells germ cells they combine together male germ cell is called as male germ cell is called as sperm it fuses with female germ cell called as ova it fuses with sperm fuses with ova to form zygote in most of the cases the male germ cell or the male sex cell or the or the male reproductive cell or the male gamete all these are names same name uh, same cell with different names the germ cells are also called as reproductive cells they are also called as gametes if it is a male germ cell it is called as a sperm cell the sperm cells are motile that means they have some movement female germ cells are called as ova and these two together fuse together to form zygote so the fusion is called as fertilization this happens in the sexual reproduction the reproduction in which a male gamete a sperm cell fuses with a female gamete to form a zygote is called as sexual reproduction so here it involves the participation of two organisms male organism female organism this kind of reproduction is seen in both plants as well as in animals in case of plants you may not call it as a sperm cell you call it as a male gamete and female gamete we don't call it as a sperm in case of plants but in case of animals you call it as a sperm and ova in plants you call it as a male gamete and female gamete 
Even plants have got male and female reproductive parts. But in most cases, they are all fixed in one part called as flower. There are some flowers which consist of both male and female parts. Those are bisexual flowers. Some, some flowers will have either male or female organs. Those are called as unisexual flowers. So whatever may be the arrangement, even in flowers also, the male gametes reach the female parts and they fertilize the egg cells to form the zygote, so on. Let us see how this mechanism of transfer of gametes, the fusion of gametes. So here uh, we discussed that the gametes are fused together. For fusion, they should be brought to one place. They should come close to each other. Who will bring them close to each other? So both these are belongs to two individuals, different individuals. There is X and Y, two persons. How the germ cells of X and Y come close? What is the site of union? How they join together? Where they join together? All this we will see. So now let us see the sexual reproduction in plants. I already told you the flower is the reproductive part. Unit. Better we say unit. It consists of reproductive parts. Some flowers they consist of both male and female parts. Some flowers consist of either male or female parts. If the flower consists of either male or female reproductive organs, you call it as unisexual flower. Example, papaya watermelon. If the flower consists of both male and female reproductive organs, you call it as bisexual flower. Example, hibiscus mustard. Here we have different parts of a flower. This is a bisexual flower, which is having both the female and male reproductive parts. So we have already studied about the structure of flower. It consists of different parts like a flower consists of a base called as thalamus. This is called as thalamus on which all the other parts are embedded. This is called as the peduncle of the leaf and here this is called as sepal and this is the colored part to attract the insects called as petal. And this is the male reproductive part andracium or stamens or stamens male part and this one is the female reproductive part pistil female part. So we know the sexual reproduction the concept of sexual reproduction male gamete fuses with female gamete. Where is the female gamete? Here inside the pistil. Pistil has got different parts. This is stigma. The top part is called as stigma. And this tube-like structure is called as style. And this is called as ovary. Inside the ovary, female gametes are there. Inside the ovary, ovules are there. One or many ovules. The ovules consist of female cells, which is located here. So for the fusion with the female gamete, the male gamete has to travel from where? From its source of production. Here where the male gamete is produced? Here in the anthers. So the stamen consists of a head-like part called as anther. The anther consists of pollen. We see the yellow color powdery substance present in the flower. The yellow color powdery substance is the pollen. Pollen consists of male gametes. Now this pollen, it has to travel from here to here. How it happens? By various natural means. Insects help in the pollination. Many of the insects, they visit the flower for nectar. During this process, the pollen sticks to the legs of the insects. When the insects visit different flowers, the pollen is dropped onto the stigmas of various flowers. From there, the trans transfer of male gamete takes place. Not only insect, wind, water and other means are also helpful. Various natural agents are helpful in the process of pollination. Pollination is nothing but the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma of um, a flower. If it takes place within the flower, you call it as self-pollination. If it takes place between two different flowers, you call it as cross-pollination.
two different flowers in the sense not of two different flowers of different species of same species so if it takes place cross pollination whatever may be self pollination or cross pollination that is it happens because that is with the help of agents like wind water or insects major contribution is done by the insects for the transfer of pollen so here from the anther to stigma the pollen reaches stigma has got some sticky substance which enable the pollen to stick once the pollen is stick to the stigma it produces a tube called as pollen tube how long so long this pollen tube it grows and grows and grows and extends into the ovary it passes into the ovary the male gametes present in the pollen they travel like this through this pollen tube and they pass down and finally they reach the ovule and inside the ovule female gametes are there so there the male gametes enter into the ovule once they enter into the ovule it fuses with the female gamete to form this zygote so here zygote is formed this zygote once the zygote is formed inside the ovule what happens the flower loses all its parts the ovary increases in its size the ovary becomes the fruit and what happens to the ovule ovule becomes the seed then what is this zygote zygote becomes the embryo embryo is covered by seed seed is covered by fruit so fruit consists of seed seed consists of embryo seed does not contain only embryo seed contains embryo and cotyledons to provide food to the embryo once the seed is planted the embryo starts growing into a new plant by using the materials present inside the seed you call it as germination that means the seed it grows into your plant so once the fertilization takes place the ovule turns to a seed the ovary turns to a fruit that means flower changes to fruit which part of the flower changes to fruit you are eating a fruit which part you are eating the ovary of the flower is changed to fruit you are throwing away the seeds which part of the flower you are throwing away ovule where is the baby plant inside the seed seed is not the baby plant seed contains some packed food material nutrients and embryo embryo is a part of seed the embryo is the baby plant it grows into your plant by using the materials present in the seed so this process is called as seed germination you might have done various activities experiments in your third fourth fifth classes about seed germination various conditions necessary for seed germination you can relate those things to here the sexual reproduction in plants so this is the way how the sexual reproduction takes place in plants now let us see the reproduction in human beings we have seen the reproduction in plants now reproduction in animals but here we are not discussing the reproduction various modes of reproduction in uh, lower forms of organisms or animals we are going to discuss about the reproduction in human beings so here the human reproduction is of sexual type sexual reproduction involves two organisms of different gender one male and one female two organisms are involved in this process of reproduction and one more point we discussed earlier for the process of reproduction reproductive cells are needed when an organism either man or women male or female is capable of producing reproductive cells then that organism is eligible for reproduction means then that organism can participate in re reproduction to participate in reproduction the organism should be able to produce the reproductive cells when when this happens so in our life in our growth pattern there are various stages 
which are controlled by hormones which we discussed in the previous chapter. A baby is born. A young baby cannot reproduce. The baby has to grow. You see the different events that takes place at particular ages. The changes that takes place in our bodies at particular uh, stages as an events. When we are born, we don't know anything. Simple response to the stimuli. Just for pain, pressure and hunger, we cry as a baby. The baby grows to six months. Baby smiles. Baby learns social smiling. Baby gets teeth. So why does the baby gets teeth only at six months of age? Of course, it may be different from baby to baby at five months, six months, seven months. But that is the, that there is one stage approximately fifth month or sixth month or seventh month. Varies from baby to baby, depends upon the nutrition and other conditions. But only at that point it is initiated. That is because of hormones. The baby grow into a kid. Right? So when they attain the age of six years, they lose their milk teeth and they get the permanent teeth. So only at some point, some change is triggered in our body. In everybody's body. Everybody at six years to seven years of age, they lose their teeth and they get new teeth. That all happens because of hormones. So and in our body, the changes, the physical changes are programmed like that. This program is fixed in the DNA. So you see at six years, we lose milk teeth and we get the permanent teeth. Then the baby, the, the kids grow. They attain some age of 11, 12, 13 years. You call them as teenagers. At this stage, we call a change in our bodies. We call that particular group as adolescents. Earlier we call as infants, 0 to 2 years infants. Then babies, kids we call them as. After the teens we call them as. At this period, what you say is some 12 years above. We call them as adolescents, 13, 14, 15 and 16 years of age. We call it as adolescents. So this is the age, some 16 or 17. This is the age where you get, attain the sexual maturation or sexual maturity. Sexual maturity. What is sexual maturity? The sexual organs, the mature means they become ready or prepared to produce reproductive cells. Sexual maturity means the organism, if you say one organism is attained, sexual maturity means that organism is able to produce sex cells. That means germ cells. So when it happens, you see the male, boy and girl, they need to have some age at a specific age. That is, as I told you, it is not exactly same for all the children. You see that female, if you see the girls, the sexual maturation process may start at 11 years or 12 years or 13 years. So it starts, it initiates. So how it is initiated by hormones? And how do we know that the changes are initiated? They are observed by some changes in their body, physical changes. We can observe it. Okay. This girl is becoming adolescent. You can observe it. This boy is becoming adolescent. We can observe that. And you yourself, you can recognize. You yourself, you can identify the changes in your body which happens during the period of adolescence that is because of the reproductive hormones produced in male and female. In the hormones lesson, in the control coordination lesson, I already I told you about the hormones in males, testosterone starts produced and this testosterone brings the sexual characters in males and estrogen brings sexual characteristics in females. Why physical changes? These physical changes enable the opposite sex to identify the other organism is capable of reproducing. That is the reason. And let us see what are the physical changes you observe. You see if it is in case of the boys, when they attain the age of 12, 13, 14, during this period, their, their body increases in height, growth increases, 
the size of bones increases bones size body size increases so here let us see what kind of physical changes noticeable observable changes takes place when the sexual maturation starts in the body of boys and girls so here in case of the boys you see the growth the growth is at maximum rate so quickly so fast they grow up till the age of 12 they'll be like small kids suddenly they starts increasing the height they go to 5 feet 6 feet tall the length of the bones increases so that is the one noticeable character we observe the initial thing we observe growth and we observe the cracked voice cracked voice the voice it changes there is a difference between the voice of a man and between the voice of a boy boy's voice is a very high pitched voice man voice is a low pitched bass voice now this voice will be in between shuffling between boy voice and man's voice such cracked voice is developed because some changes in the vocal cords that is due to this sexual maturation the the impact of the hormones cracked voice growth of hairs growth of hair on the body so we see that we'll be having very thin hair on the body by birth but in certain places the growth of the hair is observed especially during the sexual maturation formation of mustache and beards formation of hair in the armpits and in the genital areas and sometimes for some people depending upon their genetic nature depends upon their parents the hair is grown throughout whole the body that is on the chest on the back on the hands so in such a way the hair is grown the growth of the hair especially starts at this stage when they attain the sexual maturation so this is one indication that they are attaining the sexual maturity so growth of the hairs this is also observed the skin it becomes oily more sebum is secreted in the skin because of over production of oil the skin may be attracting more and more bacteria and sometimes may leads to pimples and lot of body odor bad smell is also generated because of the working of bacteria on this oil and other substances found on this skin and growth of genital organs growth of genital organs penis in case of males so these are the various secondary sexual characters that are observed in the boys these characters show that the organism is turning capable of producing the germ cells so you see that occasionally the penis it becomes erect it is due to the influence of the hormone actually all these things are under the control of the hormone that is the testosterone the male reproductive organ hormone so here the these are the physical changes internally what happens that is in the reproductive organ called as testis the production of reproductive cells takes place germ cells takes place in the testis that is also due to the influence of testosterone the germ cells are produced okay we'll discuss it later now let us see in case of the girls also we see most of the things same common we see the growth of their height their body increases in size but a voice wise uh, you will not see that uh, any changes there because the voice and uh, here you see their bone size increases bone width at specific locations like their hip size increases hip bone size increases and their breasts increase in size it is due to accommodate mammary glands the mammary glands are the glands which produce milk in case 
they give birth to young one to feed the young one the mammary glands need to supply milk so that is the reason why the breasts increase in size the nipples get dark continue so here we see the growth of hairs on the body not the mustache and beards growth of hairs in uh, underarm and in the genital areas so these are the various changes observed here in case of males the onset of production of male gametes takes place in the testis similarly in females also the female reproductive cells are produced released actually in case of females by birth they will be having number of female cells in their ovaries but at this age by the at the time of sexual maturity these reproductive cells mature and they are released the release of ova is initiated by some kind of process called as menstruation so the onset of menstruation is an indication it shows that the egg cells are released in the females menstruation starts in the girls so these are the changes all these changes do not happen at a single time in a single person these changes may happen slowly take some months so you are aware of the changes that are happening in your bodies sometimes at this age the people are worried tensed some of the adolescents when they find some pimples they are tensed and worried they feel that something happens to their body some people when they see that the beards are grown they are they feel shy they cannot go and play with other other, other children some people they are worried why the beards are not grown they may feel that they have some problem in that in their bodies it is because these events are based on hormones hormones are controlled by our genes so it, it will not happen similarly for all the people it is different for different people depends upon the production of hormone in their body it depends upon the genes that are present in their body and of their parents some people will have very thin hair on their face even some people will have very less beard less number of hairs some people will have very thick beard very stiff hairs very uh, thick mustache some people may have very less so it is not a problem it doesn't mean that the sexual maturity is not being attained so here the people those who are in adolescent stage they need not worry about all the changes here so all these changes are given in your books they are brought to your notice that is to remove the ambiguity in your minds because you may be gathering such information from your friends which is very confusing and not appropriate so you will be having fault faulty assumptions wrong assumptions about your growth patterns so that is the reason why this adolescent education and these concepts are given in your books that is to make you aware of your body the changes that takes place in your body so all these changes are very natural so one need not worry about the changes okay these changes are not happened to me and one need not worry oh all these changes are happened to my body my body is changed so you need not worry this is a very natural thing which happens because your body is attaining sexual maturity your body is attaining it doesn't mean that you have not completely attained the sexual maturity a girl who is able to menstruate and produce egg cells very soon she cannot participate in reproduction it will adversely affect her health physically as well as mentally so it needs some time for the complete maturation of our systems so it is the onset starting of the sexual maturation your body must be completely grown up your mind also must be completely grown up that is to for the production of babies that is to reproduce 
so here the reproductive cells are produced male reproductive sex, uh, cells by male male cells you call it as sperm cells and female reproductive uh, female produce female reproductive cells called as ova or egg cells so these cells are to be transferred fusion should takes place for reproduction where the fusion takes place in case of some animals the fusion takes place in the environment like in frogs male frog and female frog releases their cells into the water and in the water the male cell fuses with female and egg is formed in the water but in most of the cases higher animals including human beings fertilization takes place in the body of female it takes place in the body of female so the sperm it has to be transferred to the female's body and inside the female reproductive system in the female reproductive system the fusion of male and female gamete takes place and the formation of zygote takes place in the female reproductive system so that is in the body of the female so there are su such arrangements by which in sexual reproduction in humans the male and female join together the male passes the sperm cells into the body of the female the organs are developed in such a way so when when this is done the formation of the zygote takes place in the female body there are such arrangements there are such organs that is to accommodate this zygote in the female reproductive system till this zygote develops into a baby so that the whole process is called as pregnancy so the female body is designed in such a way that it can accommodate the zygote from a very small single cell zygote to a completely grown up baby till then for the period of gestation 9 months the zygote till it is developed into completely a baby the baby is accommodated inside the mother's womb such kind of arrangements are done there to provide all the nutrient water oxygen everything to the baby whatever is needed for the growth of the baby so such kind of arrangements are done in the female body so in this way the organs the systems the hormones are designed in such a way that in human sexual reproduction the male sex cells or the sperm cells are passed to the female body to the female reproductive system and inside the system the fusion takes place and there is a chance of fertilization if the fertilization takes place if the male gamete fuses with the female gamete it leads to pregnancy and the it forms a zygote and the zygote develops to a baby if there is no fertilization takes place then the egg cell is flushed out released out that is during a process of the term menstruation so now let us see the male and female reproductive cells are produced in the reproductive organs systems of male and female in humans they are different in case of male reproductive system if you see the various parts of the male reproductive system here we see the side view of a male reproductive system it consists of different parts some parts they help to produce the reproductive cells and the other parts they help to pass the reproductive cells into the female reproductive system here we can see that in case of male reproductive system the passage of reproductive cells as well as the urine is same urogenital duct this is so this is the duct which is common for the passage of urine as well as sperm cells this we can understand by looking at here that pipe the duct that is arriving from the urinary bladder is also connected to the same tube which is present in the penis the same tube is connected to something else inside the scrotal sac this is the testis so males have a pair of testis two testis in which the production of male reproductive cells takes place because of the hormone testosterone so where are the germ cells are produced here male germs are produced in the testis so these male reproductive cells are collected by this tube called as vas deferens here is the tube this vas deferens collects the male reproductive cells which are called as sperm cells the sperm cells are added up with some fluid called as semen the fluid is added by these seminal vesicle as well as prostate gland so these accessory prostate gland and seminal vesicles they add up some fluid to the 
male gametes sperm cells now the sperm cells are added up with some fluid what is the necessity of the fluid the fluid consists of nutrients which help the sperm cells to live for long time and moreover the sperm cells they have to travel all the way through this penis into the female reproductive system and even in the female reproductive system also they have to move they are motile they should go in search of the egg cell and they have to penetrate the egg cell so they need energy they need nourishment that is supplied by the semen so here the semen is added and this male gametes that are produced in the testis which are passed through the vas deferens and they are which are nourished by this semen by the seminal vesicles this material it passes through the penis enters the female reproductive system so these are the various parts of the male reproductive system that help in the production of male reproductive cells that is the sperm cells the sperm cell will have a head middle piece and a tail like this so now let us come to the female reproductive system the female reproductive system it is present in the lower abdomen of the females it consists of various parts like uterus fallopian tubes ovary vagina when a girl baby is born she is born with the ovaries with hundreds of immature eggs thousands of immature eggs these immature eggs starts maturing one by one when she attains the maturation sexual maturation that means menstruation when it starts it indicates that the immature eggs in the ovary are started maturing so this egg cell is released here the released the matured egg cell which is released is captured by this fallopian tubule so it travels in the fallopian tubule like this it comes to this place fallopian tubule and if any by chance if a male reproductive cells enters here then fertilization takes place at this spot here you can see in the female reproductive system two ovaries are there as like in males two testes in female two ovaries so the egg cells may be released either from this ovary or this ovary for the fertilization the male gametes must be there in the female reproductive system how is it possible how can the male gametes be in the female reproductive system they are to be introduced into this system that is done by the male reproductive system we know that in sexual reproductions two organisms should join together for the transfer of reproductive cells the males transfer the reproductive cells through the vagina and here there is a part called the cervix at which the uterus is connected so whenever these sperm cells are released at this position called as vagina and these sperm cells they are nourished with the semen so they take movement in this direction and they enter into the uterus but in the uterus there is nothing to fertilize because the eggs are present in the fallopian tubule so these sperm cells they have to move towards the egg cell which is in the fallopian tubule so the sperm cells they move to the egg cell there the fertilization takes place thousands of sperm cells only one egg cell is released in a month of period 28 days not more than that in females in a month of in a period of 28 days they are able to release only one egg cell either by this ovary or this ovary sometimes alternately one month this ovary one month this ovary but male gametes thousands and thousands of male gametes are produced of course it takes very long journey here and sometimes it may uh, these male reproductive cells may live for some 48 hours to 72 hours in this time if they don't find any egg cell these male cells get disintegrated and of course here egg cell is there but there are no male cells there is no mating in this period so in the female body the egg cell is released but there is no sexual participation here there is no entry of male gametes in that period what happens to that egg cell whenever the egg cell is released here in the uterus the walls are thickened with blood cells that is in the anticipation of pregnancy if there is no male cell entry here so there is no sexual participation of this organism so in such cases this egg cell will disintegrate and whatever the blood lining is formed in the uterus it will be flushed out that is called as menstruation so the menstruation takes place in a cycle of 28 days 
if there is no fertilization if once the fertilization takes place the menstruation stops till the baby is born the menstruation stops and here the fertilized zygote is fixed in the uterus and it grows into the baby so it, uterus is a bag like structure which provide all the layers all the fluids everything for the growth of the baby so once if the fertilization takes place then the menstruation stops if there is no fertilization there are more, no uh, male cells or sperm cells here for fertilization then whatever the arrangements are made for pregnancy or all these arrangements all these lining and everything is flushed out that is called as menstruation which happens in a cycle of 28 days this is observed in the female reproductive system so here if the fertilization takes place we have seen that if fertilization does not takes place then whatever the basic arrangements are done in the uterus the lining the thickening of the lining the formation of mucus the formation of the blood vessels everything is released out in a cyclic manner which takes nearly 1 month or 28 days and this flushing out takes place 2 to 8 days called as menstruation menstruation cycle menstruation cycle but if fertilization takes place what is that if fertilization takes place the embryo it grows in its size it fixes in the uterus the walls of the uterus are lined with blood and mucus you call it as placenta so placenta is the material which is rich in glucose and oxygen which provides glucose and oxygen to the baby for its growth the necessary conditions are to be provided for the growth of baby that is achieved by this placenta so as the embryo grows up into a baby you can see an umbilical cord is formed that means from the placenta there is a cord connected to the baby which provide all the nutrients oxygen and which helps in the removal of waste materials and all such and the total period is called as gestation gestation period it is of 9 months which takes for the complete development of the baby once the baby is developed the baby takes birth so the baby which is developed in the uterus it comes out out through again through vagina if it is a natural birth so this is totally controlled by the hormones so there are two female hormones estrogen and progesterone progesterone plays a major role in providing all the necessary conditions and changes in the uterus for the growth of the baby inside so we discussed about the sexual reproduction in humans that is in our case so we studied the characteristics by which we can decide we can identify that we are able to produce the reproductive cells so once you confirm that you are able to produce reproductive cells then do you think you can reproduce you can produce babies so what is the time when you can start produce babies what are the various issues related to that during the phase of puberty adolescence your sexual secondary characters may develop your organs get ready to produce sexual cells reproductive cells it doesn't mean that you are totally ready to produce young ones you are not completely ready to reproduce babies because it is the initiation the starting phase of the reproductive system the development initially it produces the reproductive cells but the reproductive organs they are to be completely matured it needs some time and what are the other issues your mind also must be matured to produce young ones babies there is a difference between dogs and cats producing babies and humans producing babies because humans are social animals dogs and cats are not we have social responsibility if you are able to produce young ones or babies what are the social issues will you be able to raise them so these are the different issues that are to be decided discussed so it doesn't mean that by acquiring the ability of producing reproductive cells it doesn't mean that we are ready to reproduce so everyone needs some age for the complete maturation of the reproductive system for the complete mature of uh, maturation of their mind ideas thoughts decisions 
so then you are ready to reproduce so here there are many issues linked up there are many pressures sometimes there may be a force from your peer group your friends your neighbors and sometimes uh, you may be forced to participate in sexual acts but you need to know various factors that are linked up with that having a sexual act or to uh, have an attempt to reproduce so you need to be aware of all these things before you make an attempt to reproduce or make, before you make a make to have a sexual intercourse so these are very essential you may be observing even some governments okay some people are achieved their sexual maturity mental maturity they got some age of some 24 25 years of age they got some good jobs employment so they have earnings even though they produce the babies they can raise them even then such cases also the government makes some announcements don't give birth to many babies limit your children to one or two why government make such statements there is pressure from the government the government order all the doctors to make uh, family planning operations to control the population such so it shows that humans are the social animals if we bring the new population into the society we should be able to provide all the amenities to the people who are coming the population the generations which are coming so we have social responsibility we all have to look about the social conscious social elements also as we are a social animal so simply by attaining sexual maturity we cannot reproduce and produce the babies as like other animals moreover there are many issues linked up with the other issues linked up with the reproduction the second most important part here is stds sexually transmitted <coughs> diseases sexually transmitted diseases means there are so many diseases which transmit by having a sexual intercourse so if you have an attempt of having a sexual intercourse with a stranger you don't know about the person in such case some diseases may pass from the person syphilis gonorrhea warts most importantly hiv these are transmitted by sexual contact so if you have unprotected sex with the people with the strangers you don't know of course anyway if you even even though you know the person for few days you don't know what is his health status health condition you don't know how much infections he has in him is blood he might be infected with hiv he might be infected with some other syphilis or gonorrhea surely that infection transmits so these are cureless diseases life threatening diseases so in the expectation of some pleasure or fun if you attempt such sexual intercourse with somebody there if you attempt an unprotected sex you will be the victim of these kind of diseases so it is is a very serious issue which should be properly judged or thinking should be done without any thinking by the force of your friends or somebody else's if you do that there you will be in a very big problem so sexually transmitted diseases are the major problem here by having unprotected sex here to avoid this is there any prevention yes here the preventive measures are using physical barriers like condoms it is a physical barrier which is worn on the penis so by that the fluids in the male and female body are not in contact so there is no transmission of virus it can give you protection so in this way prevention of these sexually transmitted diseases can be done by using the physical barriers like condoms and the next thing birth control so if you attempt for a sexual act sexual intercourse with other gender that means if you participate in a sexual act with another person there is a chance of pregnancy before we discuss that the male gamete fuses with female gamete so there is a chance of pregnancy pregnancy sometimes this pregnancy is unwanted unwanted when it is unwanted 
द मैरिड कपल द कपल हू आर मैरिड दे डोंट वॉन्ट चिल्ड्रन देन दे डोंट वॉन्ट दिस प्रेग्नेंसी सो दिस इज अनवॉन्टेड एंड इवेन द टू स्ट्रेंजर्स हू पार्टिसिपेट इन सेक्शुअल इंटरकोर्स प्रेग्नेंसी इज अनवॉन्टेड एंड ऑलरेडी वी डिस्कस इट दैट विथ एन इमेच्योर रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम a female child gets the pregnancy it affects her body her mental status everything adversely it badly affects her body both physically and mentally when she attains pregnancy in an unmatured state so to avoid that unwanted pregnancy we can use contraceptives contraceptives so there are methods by which we can avoid pregnancy to avoid pregnancy methods are using hormone pills tablets or drugs so these tablets or the pills it will control the maturation or fertilization of the egg with the sperm so these pills are to be taken orally definitely they have so many side effects and spoil our body so this is a prevention method it doesn't show that yes you can do whatever you like by using this because taking chemicals or drugs into our body surely they will have side effect on our body it just indicates that yes there is a prevention it shows it doesn't mean that you have all the options and you can commit whatever you like it it doesn't mean that right so pills and physical barriers like condoms see the condoms they are they prevent sexually transmitted diseases sometimes as well as the pregnancy also so pregnancy is also avoided by wearing the condoms so they assure you the protection from being pregnant at the same time from the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases but here one more point the usage of this pills and the usage of this condoms also must be known if not there may be a problem still exist so these contraceptives also fail sometimes the pills if they are not taken in a proper way they may fail and i already told you there will be some side effects if the barriers are also not used properly they may fail they are made out of some material called as latex they may tear in such cases also there is a chance of infection so that is the second thing and uh, there are some physical barriers like loops copper t copper t copper t means it is a physical barrier which is fixed in the uterus of the female so we cannot uh, think any of these methods are excellent and extraordinary and problemless methods there is a problem associated with each and every method here we discussed here but these are the options so copper t means they will place a barrier in the uterus which will prevent the fertilization of sperm and egg cell but it will cause irritation and infections in the uterus of females and the other method most widely used for the married couples is that loops once they have children one children or two children they wanted to go for family planning that means they don't want any more children in such cases their reproductive uh, tubes we have seen that their vast difference in males so the vast difference they will cut and they will tie a loop so by the sperm cells which are formed the sperm cells they cannot pass into the female reproductive system so the ducts which carry the cells are cut and looped this is done by a minor surgery this is a less problematic one if it is done in males you call it as vasectomy in females if the fallopian tubule is cut and it is tied it is called as tubectomy in females and in males it is called as vasectomy so by this method surgical methods we can avoid pregnancy so avoidance of pregnancy is mostly used and accepted in case of when they go for family planning so it is accepted in case of family planning they have children they don't want any more children or the couple the married couple they haven't planned yet their life so they need some time for the pregnancy in such cases that is used so these are the various options for the birth control and next thing sex determination sex determination means finding out whether the baby is male or female before the baby is born 
So the technology enable us to scan to know what how the internal parts are there. So whether the doctors are able to know whether the baby is male or female. But once this is known out, some of the people, those who have bad intention in their mind, bad ideas about the male and female genders, those who have discrimination in their minds, once if they come to know that the baby which is growing inside the mother womb is a female, they are attempting abortions, killing of the fetus. It is called as feticide, female feticides. Many of the female children are killed like that in the past 10 years. So by the female population has gradually gone down. The males are more in society compared to females, which is causing a very big problem now. It is because of the bad assumption that female children are a burden to the parents. So that was a very wrong and faulty assumption by the people. So this discrimination led to the female forticides. So that is the reason why the government has banned sex determination. Doctor should not tell the whether the baby is male or female to the patient. If they do so, that is a crime. The doctor will be arrested and the people who attempted that they also will be arrested against law. It is to control or prevent the female feticide. So when the fetus is growing up, when the embryo is formed, that also can be removed by a process called as by a surgical process called as abortion. Sometimes when an unwanted pregnancy is done, the pregnancy is initiated. If it has to be removed, that is done by abortion. That is a surgical method. But whatever the methods here we discussed here, that is for the birth control that can be followed by the people, those who have started their life as a couple, getting married and started their life as a couple, then as a part of their life, with all the other social issues, they can take the choices. But as an individual, as an immature person, to make use of these things, you must be completely aware of each and every consequence, not only technical, not only health related, you should be able to know the social consequences also before you commit any act. So that is very important. So the next one is overpopulation. So by the process of reproduction, the population increases. So why this process is there in the living organisms in the humans? Why the living organisms should re reproduce? There is a lot of population. Many people, many uh, socialists say that the overpopulation is the main reason for all the problems now. The population is growing up on the planet. That is the main problem for uh, all these things. All the people are not able to get the basic amenities. And no one is, uh, all the people are not able to live comfortably. But in the view of science, you say that, okay, yes, reproduction is a natural ability of the organism. Every organism wanted to perpetuate its race. See, in your family, your grandfather, grandmother, they wanted to continue their race. They wanted to continue their vamsam. In the same way, every species, every animal wanted to continue its species. Tiger wanted to continue its species. Humans wanted to continue their species, develop their species. It is a part. You can see the other social aspect also. The overpopulation may not be a problem if there is no discrimination, high and low. If there is no distribution of uh, indiscriminate distribution of money, circulation of money between the people, higher social status, low so social status. So very various issues. So whatever it may be, so the overpopulation is also a problem. It is identified that can be controlled by birth control methods that is suggested by the government. So by that, the government also able to produce basic amenities and all the things to the people. And even the people also must have the social responsibility, social idea, social consciousness, health consciousness, everything, all these aspects in mind before they commit the reproduction or they commit the sexual intercourse or whatever so. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.